Mike, turn your games down. Hi, everyone. Episode 256 of Games My Mom Found. I am Mike Overton. And who doesn't want to fly around the city fast until after they do a whole bunch of needless activities first? With me tonight. I'm Joe Butler, and I came back with mystical ghost powers. Ooh. I'm Blair Farrell from comicbookvideogames.com, and I'll never drink the water. I'll make you order French champagne. <laughs> All right. And we are here to talk about a game that I really was excited to play, and not excited, then re-excited again in the, in the whole course of this game being released and coming out. Talk about Gotham Knights, came, developed by WB Games Montreal, published by Warner Brothers, and came out for PS5, Windows, Xbox in 2022. So just last year. God, this game's only a year old. Or a little over that. <laughs> yeah. So, and, um, and as I always like to say, Blair, what is your history with this game? I mean, this game almost made you viral. We got to get that joke out of the way first. Well, it did until I cut it off at the knees. <laughs> I don't know um, why. It was, it was fucking great. Yeah. The interviews but, people. Well, that's oh, the thing. Yeah. I just like, I re-reviewed this game because I wrote a review and I honestly think the mood I was in affected that. And I, I didn't, I don't want to be that guy. Because, like, I want to talk to game makers and I don't want to come off as, like, another contrarian person on the Internet. But uh, I was excited for this game, mostly because uh, I really like the Batman Arkham Origins. I like the Batgirl section in Arkham Knight, both developed by WB Games Montreal. So when they announced in 2020 during the DC fandom that they're making a new game with, like, Court of the Owls and these characters... Uh, I was pretty excited until they showed gameplay of like them fighting Mr. Freeze and I could see numbers rolling above people's heads and then some red flags started going off. And I was still excited even as it like kind of got into the launch and people were talking about different things. So that's my level of like awareness. We'll get into like the rest of it as we go on through the course of the recording. Oh, Oh, man. Player, I hope another beloved Batman franchise does not incorporate the things from this game into another game. Does it involve the, a squad? Yeah, I'm actually really excited for Suicide Squad. I'm not gonna lie. <sighs> I, I feel that a I feel that a survey to get into the beta and the beta questions were like, "Do you like Destiny and Rainbow Six and Fortnite?" Oh my God. And yeah, it was basically, "Do you like all of these looter shooters?" So I'm probably not going to get in. So I click no on all of those. It's like, I just want to play a superhero game, guys. I want to, you know, be Captain Boomerang throwing boomerangs, not with a machine gun. But anyway, Gotham Knights. But if you don't make a game for the service, how are you going to make more money? I mean, you don't make money, which is why all these services are going down and people are getting laid off left and right. Yes. <laughs> God, seeing these oh, my- by- Go ahead, Mike. I was going to say, my history with Gotham Knights is I saw it come out, same thing. I got excited. I saw the numbers. And I'm like, eh, okay, I'm still curious. But th- I th- was it originally not for PS4? Or was it, it was, always next gen? They canceled the PS4 version. This is PS4, Xbox One. They canceled those. Uh, I read a rumor a while ago. I never really dug into it because people really just kind of find something out of nothing that it might be coming to Switch. I don't know how. So we'll yeah. see if that actually happens. Okay, I mean, and so I was curious about when I first heard it was PS5. I'm like, all right, now I sort of care about getting a PS5. And then I got it in a humble bundle for PC. People said it runs on a Steam Deck, which it did. And so that's what I finally, I was like, okay, and that's how it ended up on the show. Because I got it in a really cheap deal for in a humble bundle, like 25 or 30 bucks for this and a whole bunch of other games. That's my, what about you, Joe? I have also been really excited about this game, especially because if you saw a game and then go, because... I when I saw the trailer for this, I legitimately thought that we're getting another Arkham game and it will I'll go through it throughout the series. But this game very much feels like it was going to be an Arkham game. And then someone else got their hands on it and we're like, well, we can't. But uh, you tell me there's a game where I can fucking play as Red Hood. I am pretty much just goddamn fucking spewing at the mouth excited. And uh, I had a pretty good time. I had, I had an OK time with it. And I'll also get more into that. But this was also on Game Pass and I pay for Game Pass because I'm stupid. So it was free. Not a bad thing. If you Yeah. You make use of it. I mean, there's a from what I've seen, there's a lot of good games on Game Pass for people. So. Yeah. Yeah, but you know what you can't play on Game Pass? Arkham. The Steam Deck. It's apparently like pain in the ass to set up and You can do it though. It's it's not even like it's not even download. It's like streaming and it's like I'm not going to fucking stream games to my Steam Deck. That's People sounds, do. Yeah, but I oh, so. It just depends on your 
so I, I have a question for both of you. So I played this in the Steam Deck. My game was not pretty majority of the time. Like, it was downright ugly when I was in the open world, and I'm assuming that's because I had some of the settings down really low to make it run better. Because this game was downright ugly for me. I mean, I didn't care, personally. Uh, I was playing on, I guess I was playing through Game Pass, and I guess I didn't have my game corrected through Game Pass, and I my game was also fucking ugly, so maybe it's just a game. I... Last year, I played, well, uh, at launch, I got it on Xbox Series X. I didn't play on a 4K display. Now, this summer, I bought it on PlayStation 5 on a deal to replay it, and I played it one and a half times. I went to the New Game Plus. I don't know if it's, like, pretty. It's just, and we'll get into it, it's just not a very interesting world. Like, when you think of Arkham Knight and even Arkham City, they have this Gotham like flavor where it's it feels like this is a constructed world and there's all types of landmarks you can see. And this is Gotham City, but it feels like it could be literally anywhere. Mm-hmm. Like it just reminds me of the 2008 Hulk game where it's where you're in New York and you can beat up Trump Tower and all these other places, <laughs> but they're just buildings with a Trump Tower icon on them. Like there's. It, it just feels like a city. I think that's that's just how the game is. Well, mine was blurry at times. Like their faces were blurry and stuff. Oh, but no, I didn't. I didn't really experience yeah, any that. Of that. I, oh, I, I think I had either. my settings too low, so I don't blame that on the game. Because I, I, because I watching screenshots. I mean, some of the videos are nice, but every so often when it would get like open world stuff, I think it was just the Steam Deck was also just compensating for the. Because I probably have it. I didn't. I had the settings. I always set settings low as I can, especially something this new, just because I wanted to run better than I wanted to look pretty. But it didn't. It didn't take away from me for the game. I was just curious if you guys had any experiences like that, or if it was me. You could always Google stuff like that if you try to play something newer. Because I know, like, I really want. I really want to play Cyberpunk. That's one of the reasons why I bought a Steam Deck was so I can sit on my couch and fucking play it. And <laughs> uh, the Steam Reddit has very specifically people update like what you should have your steam deck settings on so it doesn't look like dog poo you know it didn't i mean it didn't bother me like there was a scene for a long time where when i would drive in the motorcycle batgirl's cape would just stay in one spot (laughs) like it wouldn't move in the wind it just went straight back and just stood there (laughs) like i was like you know those type of little glitches don't bother me especially on a pc game where i'm like well yeah my settings are really low so who gives a shit like that none of that took away from the experience for me I was just curious to what other people have had, but I'm watching a speedrun of the game right now, and the guy's playing it on PS5, I think, and it's much, much prettier than mine was, which is fine. <laughs> I just wanted to play it. Like, I didn't give a sh- I don't give a shit how pretty a game is. I just want to play a game. And this was a really fun Steam Deck game just to play. Except it did drain my battery pretty damn fast, but that's fine. <laughs> I was usually connected to power at all times. <laughs> so it was fine, but... So one of the things that's special about this game, the whole idea is that the beginning cutscene is you find out Batman died. Spoiler. Oh, and there will be spoilers for this game. That's not a spoiler. This is the fucking cutscene that advertised the game. But we will be spoiling Gotham Knights that came out last year, so I should put a warning in. We won't get into the the real spoiler stuff until later, but I'll try to put our warning in there. But you've been warned. Here's the first one. But so the whole idea is Batman died, and you get to play as the four four characters. That what, how many months is it after he's died? Like a couple months or a year or days? Like I can't remember. I I thought they get I think they get together like right after they he dies like they kind of like okay yeah so you're in the Belfry which would become like the new the new Batcave essentially it's, it's Batgirl Nightwing Robin but Tim Drake Robin unfortunately not Ken's favorite Robin he I know he must have been really he was gonna be on this episode but he Damian Wayne wasn't in it so he just couldn't join he was just so upset <laughs> oh but you get to use Red Hood who has two guns <laughs> bitch yes. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we listen to this now. <laughs> but, and then good. you also play as Red Hood. And I mean, to me, that got me interested. So why, when I first started playing this game, I, I came into an idea that I was going to play a Batgirl simulator because I just like Batgirl. That didn't last long just because I, I wanted to try out everybody. And then I just couldn't stop playing as everybody. So uh, what's uh, I did, your experience? I Joe? did the I did the weird thing and I decided to get up and I was like, hello, husband. Would you like to play a game with me? And he's like, yeah, I'll play a game with you. So I decided to play as Red Hood, and uh, I was going to switch around the characters, but then I, you know, it was like, whatever. And then my husband decided to play as the, hold on, he said it quoted, the booty cheek creek freak himself, Nightwing. 
uh, which his ass is very big this whole game, and they they do not tend to like not have like an upper angle where you can see his whole body with his ass. But Nightwing's the healer, which was weird, and I even came as a surprise to both of us. And uh, Red Hood has weird ghost gun powers, which makes sense at the end of the game apparently. But uh, we had a pretty fun time. The game was really wonky though, because I guess it was because we were playing two player like he couldn't sneak kill people sometimes and like sometimes he dropped down and be like hidden i could hear him hitting the the button to kill and it just wouldn't work i really wanted to play this co-op but i don't think even among the people that i kind of follow who play these games that a lot of them kind of just skipped it and then uh, it's just a problem this being an adult and just finding someone to play and then you have to like coordinate your schedules and things like that so i just played on my own I think this would be better co-op. I heard like Victor, Victor Lucas and he reviewed it for Electric Playgrounds. That's how he played. And it sounded like they had a lot of fun. And it's, you know, like Resident Evil 6 uh, is not a great game. But if you play it with someone, it's like makes it that much better. Um, then the second go around, I had a little bit more fun. But I think I would have looked at it a bit more favorably from the top if I would have had a partner. Yeah. What is it? There, There's there's a lot of fun to playing co-op. There was there was moments there's. Two separate moments. There's moments where me and uh, my husband are together and we would coordinate on who to attack. So we'd sneak kill. We'd sneak take out like two people at once and then keep doing that. And then there's other times which actually makes the game a lot go by faster. He was getting the like Batman secret identity like cover ups. And I was getting the I was doing the caches and we were both both getting EXP for it. So we kind of knocked out a bunch of stuff in, in one go. Oh yeah, because you can run around the whole world map kind of thing, right? And you're not tangled, you're not tethered to each other. Yeah, as long as you're not doing like the main missions where you have to go into like a room, like, and I mean that like where it's like I think that's the part where like you, when you first meet the penguin, you have to like go jump in through the roof, like you yeah. have, yeah, you have to get the way. And the only thing that is a little disappointing is it's not cutscene friendly. So because he joined my game, all the cutscenes were Red Hood, and I wouldn't mind if you were able to switch back and forth depending on who activated the cutscene. Eh, that's yeah no i get that but that's also kind of whoever's the host type of thing probably yeah we could switch into it yeah we could switch around every once in a while but it was whatever i i he knows how much i like red hood so he's like yeah you have the cutscenes. <laughs> i really don't like how the how the armor changes you wear different equipment <laughs> that's a personal issue with mike though that's not a like it didn't take away from the game but i would have rather just had them in their original costumes because i don't like random stupid costumes Oh, yeah, so like like I I, I'm thinking of like Marvel Spider Man because they didn't I don't know the suits don't have powers in Marvel Spider Man too but in the first one they do you can like unlock a suit and then get the power but then go back and apply it to like say the default suit and what you can't do here but the only suit you can use like in the digital deluxe version you have like their comic suits and you can apply everything to those. You can you can transmog your suit in this. Oh yeah, right, I forgot about that ability. Too. I I didn't try very hard. I didn't see it, and I just said fuck it and just went with the different changes, whatever. But I would have just liked it that that wasn't. <laughs> and now you you can change you can change your suit, and then the only thing you can't do is when you change it is so like if you had like the original suit equipped, you can change. I think that their helmets, their emblems, their gloves, and their and their like knee pads or their, their boots. If you were to transmog your suit, you couldn't change that, which was a little silly. But you can you can totally change your suit to make it where you're only wearing one suit the whole time. Oh, that's OK. I, I messed with the settings a little bit, but I didn't see transmog. But I knew it was there and I didn't care enough to actually find it. So but that didn't that wasn't a problem, really. It was just like, eh. I just I also really like the designs of the original four suits in this game. I think they're really good. design. I really like the Batgirl design a lot. Yeah, I, I have, have the uh, McFarlane put out the action figures and I have all of those and I really like them. I regret not buying the Funko Pops for this when it came out because I didn't give a shit. And now I'm like, fuck, now I care. And I haven't seen them again. I got them, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I will probably, I was looking for them today at the, at the toy store I went to. I was like, if I find them, I'm buying them. But I did not. But I did buy a $10 flash that lights up. So there's that. I- <laughs> I have one really weird issue, and it's just me, and people can judge me. I don't like that they Red, Red Hood has a helmet, and they kind of made it. I understand the whole point of making it like a weird, like cloth texture kind of helmet, and it still kind of works. But I also low key kind of hate it because uh, 
his mouth moves with his mask and he like because they try to make it like black and red he looks like deadpool like 50 percent of the time oh, i didn't notice that but i i did use red hood but he was <laughs> my least favorite character to use at first well he still was the least favorite completely but he got better i turned on red hood in my first rodeo and i think this is a deeper thing i i think this game is too ambitious for its own good because when I think about like there's there's whole cutscenes like when you get your traversal abilities where Alfred's talking and then they had to fix the scene for three different for four different conversations that sync up to his speech. Uh, so like when you're you have all these people and you're you want to try all of them, but the game doesn't give you a lot of incentive to do that. Mm hmm. Because when I played the first time, like I, I was using Batgirl and I went through the kind of tedious missions to get my uh, basically to turn on the ability to glide like an Arkham Knight. Yeah. <laughs> and then I wanted to I and mean, I thought, OK, I did this for one. It's unlocked for everyone. But then I realized you had to do that three more times. So I said, F that I am not switching characters anymore. So the second time I went around and it's because I watched Diego Rivera's review where he played with everyone. So I kind of wanted to experience everyone. And there's a lot of cool story stuff. But and that's I, I wish they would have had missions where it was, OK, this one is Red Hood specific or this one is Batgirl specific. But I guess you can't do that in a game where everyone can play and then it's co-op and then two people have to be there. Like, it just seems like so much work. Like, I can only imagine the amount of work that went in from WB Games in Montreal to make all of this work as well as it does. Oh, God, yeah. yes. This must have been a fucking nightmare to make this game just because there's so much to it. And yeah, it didn't sell well either, right? Didn't it bomb? I think it did OK, but not as well as they wanted. And I saw it's like uh, Joe brought up. It's on Game Pass. It's also on super deluxe playstation turbo x revival whatever the hell that thing is called <laughs> don't get me started with that i'm so pissed off they bumped the price of playstation to 150 a year i'm like are you fucking serious that's high yeah and it is high you know, and they don't put any classic games on it which is why i wanted it but that's i i don't even know what the hell it's called play extra premium super deluxe i don't know but it's on there too and matt piscatella I don't know if sort of the MPD group noticed that he like he had data where like the amount of players in Gotham Knights went up a lot after it went on those services. Ooh. Well, yeah, I mean, it's one of the things that I, I so this game got so many bad reviews and I wasn't like I wanted to play it, but I wasn't coming into it expecting like at a great time. And at first I, I had some issue but once I realized this is not Arkham. Don't play it like Arkham. Don't try to dodge like Arkham. Don't try to fight like Arkham. I appreciated the game and enjoyed it, but I had to get that out of my head. This is not Arkham because I kept trying to dodge a triangle and stuff. So, <laughs> oh, yeah, but like, you know, I had to stop doing that or I would try to like hit people, like not kill a guy, but hit a guy over here, hit a guy over here. Like you do an Arkham where you bounce around from guy to guy as you keep your combo going. That's not the type of game. You want to kill whoever you can kill and then move on to the next guy. You don't want to bounce around if you can help it. Like it doesn't benefit you. And I wonder if that was an issue for a lot of people that they came into expecting Arkham and this ain't Arkham. Probably. I can tell you one thing that was fun. One of the, the probably the worst enemy I fought in this game were the dudes with the shields where you had to do like a yeah. heavy attack. That that's actually a lot more fun playing with two people because we would I don't know how we we like no words were communicated, but somehow both me and my husband were able to figure out when he was coming back up. So I would be like beating the shit out of him and my husband was winding up his attack. So when his shield came back up, he was already like hitting him. And I don't know if it was maybe a glitch, too, but there's times where we only did do that once or twice, and he would just be stunlocked, and we'd just be beating the shit out of him. <laughs> that had to been fun. I, I can, to go along with Blair, this would have been fun to play two players, but I just, I don't dare. I mean, I I somehow am able to wrangle people and schedule podcasts for you know, recording, but I don't <laughs> want to try to schedule gaming time, too. The only time I'd done it was with Mike, back when he was on the show a lot. Me and him would do it just because, like, I could get up at, like, 6 in the morning, and I know he'd be around, so. <laughs> but... That was a different time. I don't like trying to do two player games. The last time I tried one was with Rich for the show. We could not get the fucking thing to run. It was well, thank you. EA, EA is what it was. So what was it like? Dead Space? Uh, no, uh, a way out. Oh, <laughs> I really <laughs> wanted to play that, and we just could not get it to run. And when I googled it, it was EA. So I'm like, yeah, 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 that makes so, sense. I was kind of bummed. I really want to play that game. 
someday. I mean, I found it fun with the four characters. I, I enjoyed, I really did enjoy switching off between Batgirl, Nightwing, Robin. Took me a little bit to get the feel for everybody because everyone does play a little differently. Like their, their timings are different and things. And it took me a little bit to get used to it. But I enjoyed it. I enjoyed, I mean, I am with Blair. Like there doesn't really give you a reason to. For me, it was just, I have to do a, po- I'm going to do a podcast about this. So I want to have a better way to talk about it and a better experience. So I'm going to play all four. And that was my motive for it. But, you know, the game itself doesn't, like, give you, like... I gave you achievement. It gave me achievement for playing at least once with all four. But that was it. And what I what bothers me, too, is when I played it this summer, and a lot of it is because I don't know what it is about this year. Maybe it's just the whole James Gunn thing and the Justice League game that came back out back in March. I've been in a huge DC mood all year. Like, I all I want to do is play DC games and watch Batman the Animated Series again. So that's what kind of got me into this. And what's frustrating about when you're trying to do these things, because you can't switch characters on the fly. So when you're trying to do something like, say, the traversal challenges, and I do Nightwings, and his is turned off for the night. And I'm like, okay, now I want to do Red Hoods. So I have to go all the way back for the Belfry, reset the evening, then load out into the world, then go to the waypoint to do his, and then you do that. You're like, okay, now Batgirl. So I have to do the whole thing again, as opposed to just, I wish you could just hot swap in the worlds. Like again, like Marvel Spider-Man 2 this year, you go into your app, Spider-Man goes away, and it goes to Miles Morales. Well, hopefully we can get all these things in the sequel that may or may not happen. We can get a sequel. <laughs> We're not getting a sequel. It's even weirder because we mentioned it earlier, and this is supposed to be like a like a Destiny type thing or whatever. You don't, you can't buy anything in this game like at all, unless I'm wrong. When it first came out, Blair, were you able to like buy loot crates or anything like that? I don't think so. I think <laughs> there could be an, almost a documentary about how much of our Marvel's Avengers must have affected so many things. Yeah, because this came out before, right? After. So yeah, Marvel's, Marvel's Avengers yeah. was announced in 2020 or sorry, Marvel's Avengers came out in 20, was it 2020 or 2019? I cannot remember. 2019 yeah. it was before COVID. OK, it was. Uh, oh, wait. Uh, no, PlayStation 5 came out in 2020. Yes, it came out during yeah. COVID. I and remember then, working at FedEx when it came out during COVID. So. The <laughs> PlayStation 5 version of Avengers came out like the following year. So I think Marvel's Avengers was 2020. But either way. You can probably say that they were going to do a much like Avengers and then Avengers came out and they said, oh, no, we can't do that because this is a train wreck. <laughs> well, not like a train wreck, but all the problems. And yeah, it's game of the service. Just don't. I mean, they work sometimes. Sure, it works for Destiny. It works for Fortnite. But you can't not everybody can do that. And developer publishers need to understand that concept. It's not so much publishers, it's in its CEOs because they see <laughs> one game that's like we can make one game and just keep making money. But the churn rate for all that is so high and so many of these things are getting canceled and like Suicide Squad is not even out yet and it's almost out on arrival. I wish them the best. I do, too. Except for the fact that, you know, I will not let them forget that or not let the public forget and I have a friend who was out from that game because of toxic work culture at Rocksteady. So that's, I won't get off topic other than say that. Don't forget, never forget when it comes out. I don't think, I don't think that game's going to do good just because, so. We'll see, because Rocksteady's name still carries something, even though they haven't published a game since Arkham VR. <laughs> but I mean, there's not a lot of money to go around nowadays with people, and... Uh, <laughs> They're like I think is one of the Final Fantasy VII remakes is that March part two? No, that that's also February. Okay, yeah. So I mean, <laughs> it's going to be something, but we'll we'll see. <laughs> but I, I but I agree with you. Like I think Avengers did affect this game because you can you can feel the DNA in it there that this game wanted to be a game for service. You can just feel it that they wanted to have microtransactions in here and have you buying stuff and cosmetics. Like you could feel that the DNA is there to do it. But thankfully, they didn't. And it's so weird because I, I understand that there's like a leveling system, but then you have like a you have a crafting system and then you have to craft like different <laughs> weapons and you can also <laughs> equip like mods. Well, what you do is you put the game on very easy or easy. You don't worry about any of those concepts. 
Yeah, it's but <laughs> what is there? And, and yeah. that's and that's what I and this is a I admit like I'm gonna pull from the Mike Alberton playbook and say this is a me problem. I cannot stand the RPGification of games. And that's what I like about the Arkham series is that it's an action adventure open world game. There are some skill points you can buy for things, but you don't have to go into these menus and craft Tonfa that does plus one more or something like that. And then you're dealing with new suits and then upgrades and then all these currencies like the... um, the nth metal, I think, is the one you have to use to get all the epic gear and trying to find enough of that to make like the right equipment. Like it's just and the upgrades in this just they're they're not worth it. Like, you're swapping suits in and out so much that if you like one, you're gonna go back to the Belfry and like there's another one all ready to go. That's better. <laughs> I mean, I didn't do a whole lot with the crafting. Like, I mean, pretty much what I would do is every once because this way the game, the game has like a night cycle where you go out, you do patrols, you'll have some key missions to do as part of the game. And you'll have little side missions that will come up like crimes that you can then stop or premeditated crimes that you'll then find out about from the people that you interrogate, which I do like to interrogate a feature better than Arkham games. But so you had stuff like that. But the way that I would do the crafting after each night when I would go back to to the Belfry, I would then check the desk craft anything that was just there whatever the highest power it is click it who cares power number go up yay i don't give a shit type of thing i just went okay cool numbers went up i got new thing equipped it i look different oh that sucks and then i would just go on like there was mod chips where you can add like a a little bit extra stats to what your weapon your armor but you don't really need to you just pick the highest number okay who cares and that's how it felt i mean it's cool that it's there for someone who really wants to min max i haven't been a big min maxer since I was playing Final Fantasy XI, and I had to be. I don't, you know, it's just not a way I play games now. And on on easy, I was able just to play this game and have fun, and not have to worry about any of those mechanics. It didn't matter. And then I went to very easy eventually too, just to finish it. The only pl- the only place where it, it, I remember when I was first playing, it really bit me in the ass because I was doing exactly that. I was just buying the new thing. And then I bought, I think it was Freeze Tonfas for Batgirl. And then I entered the Mr. Freeze mission. And I was doing like one point of damage. <laughs> and I okay. was—I got very confused. I was like, what is happening? I'm like, oh, because it's ice weapons and he's Mr. Freeze. That was the only time where like the boss fights in this game, especially the optional ones, Mr. Freeze, Harley Quinn. Face, for example, those are the ones that really feel like you want co-op. So, so. I, I think one thing that's really funnier is uh, you, you kind of don't get a lot of. We'll go back in the story now since we're there. You kind of get like ideas of what's kind of going on in the story. My, uh, my favorite one is we got to. It's like oh, infiltrate Star's lab because someone's stealing shit from Star's, and uh, we get there, and I go, I, I, you know, I'm on the headset with my husband, and I go. Man, I wonder who's robbing stars with all this freeze equipment and these freeze labs and this freeze <laughs> this freeze turret. Oh, who could be robbing this? F- oh, it's Mister Freeze. <laughs> yeah, but he was also in the fir- in the trailers for this game too. So yeah, and then uh, you have uh, Harley, who's apparently trying to like use chips to steal people's minds or something. I like Doctor Q. <laughs> okay, I was like, this is cool. Complete whole like whoa. Full Mobius reach around. The, the one thing that I do like is always bring up the question of who the fuck lives in Gotham anymore? Because you have all these like three goofy things happening at once. You know, you have Harley Quinn trying to sell home remedies and you have Mr. Freeze freezing people on the. He calls it a second Ice Age in his fucking gameplay. But uh, I, was, I was telling my husband, I was like, I should really go and like. I was like, Gotham's really fucked up, but would you really take a uh, like therapy from Harley Quinn? And he like I could hear him get quiet and I look over and he's looking at me like I'm stupid. I'm like, what? He's like, that's like asking if you want to go to the dentist from the dentist from the little shop of horrors. Like you walk in there and you hear people screaming. (laughs) Do you really want to go to that dentist? I'm like, yeah, that that's fair. No, I mean, for for Harley Quinn, 100 percent. There are idiots. There are idiots out there who would follow a hot blonde telling them that she can (laughs) help them. Okay, hey, that I completely believe. And also. I mean, haven't we learned in history at this point that people will follow a con man? I mean, con uh, woman, you know, people yeah, will. That's fair. Because don't, don't like when you're going through her missions, you find out she's like 
handing out like Kegel eggs and like a bunch of other stuff, like or like stress balls and like yeah, I mean fake medicine. Yeah, there there are people that yeah, it would happen, especially a hot blonde telling you things, especially one that has a saucy background, you know, as a criminal and stuff. Oh yeah, hundred percent, no question. But also going back into that, a lot of these missions feel like they were like this. Still feels like it's kind of a sequel to the Arkham series because the Joker's dead. Mister Freeze is taking over the world because I, I I don't remember it very well, but he basically says he's like I have nothing left, and that goes from the ending in Arkham Knight where you free his wife and he's like, oh well, my wife's not going to survive, and and Bruce is like, well then just enjoy the time you have with her then, and he fucks off. Well, in the files it mentions that they cured Nora Freeze. What the fuck? The I'm pretty people. sure it mentions that they cured Nora Freeze and because she didn't like what he had become, that he basically just went full on cartoonish G.I. Joe supervillain. Uh, OK, I do like his design. I like the the exosuit kind of look on him. Same. I just don't like when the numbers go up. That's what I didn't <laughs> like. The numbers didn't go down fast enough for him if my numbers were going up. That that was my only issue with that. That fight. All the boss fights in this game, like like at least the optional ones, all follow what I hate in video games is where we're going to give the boss so much health that you're just going to get to do the same thing over again for like 20 minutes. It's what I hate in games. Yeah, but I, I'll, I'll look further on that. But I just want to double back to Joe's statement and say, who lives in Gotham? Well, judging by the amount of traffic and people in this city, no one lives in Gotham because <laughs> like, the city is... And, and that's what's a bummer for the setup because they kind of have the opening where Batman has a mo- like a monologue where he's talking about it won't take long for the criminals to realize that Batman's gone and the gangs are basically going to enter a power vacuum. And you expect the city to be in chaos with like fires everywhere and robberies and explosions and everyone just like, going about their business. And it's just it contradicts kind of what's happening. Yeah. And I also don't, I like Clayface because man, the mud tech in Clayface is absolutely insane in this. Yeah. I love how Clayface looks, but I was so shocked. I did not know Clayface was in this game. (laughs) Like coming off of like the Arkham comparison where, where you can't compare Arkham apples to Gotham Knight oranges. But when you think of, well, Arkham Asylum had some not great boss fights, but they got so much better as it went along. And just think about yes. that, say, the Mr. Freeze fight in Arkham City, which is probably the highlight of the entire Arkham series, yes. where you have to use all of your skills and tools to beat him, especially if you're playing on hard. And here it's just like, well, keep hitting his leg until he falls and hit the throbbing weak point when he falls down. And then there's going to be a little man cutscene where he's going to go in the air and you have to dodge the laser and he's going to come back down. And it's just those fights where it doesn't it just feels like you're it just looks stupid, too. Is it? He's in a giant mech and like Batgirl is like hitting him with a tonfa, but it's doing damage. <laughs> like, hey, that so I had never thought I was going to get to say Metal Gear in a Batman game with Mr. <laughs> yeah. Freeze. OK, so check that off my bucket list. Didn't know I needed it. But when I saw Metal Gear, Mr. Freeze. I want to do a slow clap because I was just like, nice job, game. I applaud you. Yeah, this, this game is like fucking Metal Gear, too. Joe was right when I posted the chat. He's like, Metal Gear. And I'm like, you're not fucking Metal Gear. I do that. As much as like this game does separate itself, I love all the character designs. You have Harley, who looks like original Harley when you see her in the cell. I actually like her design when you have her boss fight. I was kind of iffy on I the weird. Too. I was kind of iffy on the weird, like upside down heart on her face, but it, it grew on me. Mr. Freeze in the exosuit's great. I mean, I don't know what you can say about Mr. Clay. He's a big Clay man. They they did that right. They did a really good job of making Clayface just feel like a unstoppable entity in this game. Like, the, the fact that the, even to start the Clayface mission, you just randomly have to stop a thug and find out the thug has no face and, and is made out of clay. And that's how you start the you start the missions for him. Like, okay. it just happens. You don't even, like, I, did, I was just breaking up a crime because I'm like, oh, a crime. Okay, oh, one guy. Okay, I'll beat the shit out of him real quick. And then just they're like, oh, it's Clay. I'm like, what? So, I mean, I thought that was genius. I, what was, what was I going to say? On opening the game, I actually liked Rachel Ghoul's design. Rachel Ghoul and Talia both look like they came out of their own adventure because, like, watching Bruce fight Raish, he has, like, all this different, like, equipment and, like, he's, like, pulling shit off of his crossbow and putting stuff on. It almost kind of feels like they were going to be playable characters at one point and then they didn't end up having it happen. 
You know, Talia's got like a katana and she's got like a gun and she has like throwing knives. I did not like either of their designs, especially. <laughs> oh, yeah. I know. I, I think I spoiled. I can't remember what episode and Ken White was like, don't talk about Talia and Gotham Knights as you were, you were saying how much you love like ally Talia and here she's just the villain. <laughs> yeah, that that was my that was one of my issues. I just didn't like the way she looked. But again, I like to tell you from Arkham City that that look, but this look makes more sense because she is Middle Eastern. So this makes way more sense than a white woman. So, you know, it was just but I really don't like her being the villain. That was my biggest issue is that she was a villain in this. And I just do not like villain Talia. But again, it fits Talia. So I can't argue with it again. It's a it's a, it's a me problem. It's not it works fine for the game. It fits with Batman lore of just a me thing. It's almost as if she died in a previous game and they used the Lazarus pit to bring <laughs> her back. I wonder if this game was originally supposed to be a sequel and then like early on in development, they're like, no, we can't do that. Yeah, I think so. I, I think, a think so. book could be written about what was happening because I remember like throughout the years following, I guess, social media and all the websites about what was rep- being reported and how much of it's true and how much of it is not is led to up for speculation because for years I remember hearing about how there was supposed to be the WB Games of Montreal was working on a Batman game where it was Damian Wayne as an adult following the conclusion of Arkham City yeah. or Arkham Knight rather. Uh, oh, I don't like know that. if that's true. I have a feeling like a bunch of stuff was prototypes and then but- this is what came out, which is my first review. I just quoted the Mr. Burns thing where I was like, we did 38 takes and that was the best one. <laughs> or like, I can't remember the exact number of what he says, but like, that's what I thought about. No, that I, I follow that closely. I was really excited. There's concept art for that Damian Wayne game. There's a female two face and like the judge concept art. And uh, yeah, there was a what's the, who's the that Gor- Gorilla Grodd was also supposed to be in the game. Mm, and okay. uh what is it there? There was supposed to be uh, ironically, we we're supposed to get a bat motorcycle and they didn't, they through all the concept art. They never confirmed who Damien's mom is, which I think was interesting, but also what is it? There was concept art for an older Bruce that looked like the, the Batman from dark Knight rises where like the suit was like being held together and he had like knee braces and like yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. That would have been cool. I mean, I, I wasn't there a Batman beyond game in production to at one point. Yeah, I mean, we, uh, these things are rumored, and, and I know someone, because it came up recently, someone was, I think it was Jason Schreier was confirming, because the the um, the video went up about Justice League kill their, Jesus, Suicide Squad killed the Justice League. Boy, I wish it was the other way around. Um, <laughs> I just want to be Superman, care about Captain Boomerang with a machine gun. Uh, I can't say this enough times. Uh, that someone said, I can't believe that WB basically told them to stop making the Superman game that they pitched. Because apparently that was a rumor that they wanted to do Superman, and then the WB overlords said no. But then Jason Schreier, who I mean is a well-trusted reporter, basically confirmed that there was never a Superman game in development from Rock City. So I don't know how much of this is speculation. Well- I mean, <sighs> Yeah, that's weird because I, I could have sworn they were saying something that that's why Suicide Squad takes place in Metropolis because they were using that city design. I mean, it could have been that like there was ideas, but nothing got off the ground. Or I also think sometimes in video games people start to make stuff without actually having you know any like been paid to do it yet. I believe that. So these, there could have been something like that too. These people weren't doing anything for like both studios, like Rocksteady. Again, in Arkham VR, I think that was 2015, 16. And then our next game isn't coming out until February of next year. That's if it hits that target release date without getting delayed again. And WB Games Montreal, it was almost 10 years between their first full game. God, there like, must have been. I feel like you have to be making something between. I mean, there's no way this game took 10 years to make. So, well, I mean, they I mean, they helped. They, there was probably. They probably like assistance work on, say, like a Lego game or other WB yeah. projects or, or things like that. So they probably weren't just idle, but not to have anything in like full production for so long. And I mean, before recording, you were talking about some of the other things that you were playing. And I kind of wish we we're in the era that a sequel of this could come out in two to three years. Mm-hmm. 
Because you think about something like, I would say, like Uncharted 1 to Uncharted 2 or Assassin's Creed 1 to Assassin's Creed 2, (laughs) where you see this framework of, oh, this Uh is really cool, but if they fix this, it would be great. But you can't do that anymore because a sequel to this would take 10 years to make (laughs) because that's the timeline now. I mean, you really could have just taken the guts of this and and made another game. I mean, I had no really issues with this game, but I do agree a sequel would have been amazing. Well, that's what they've been doing is they they've been taking the guts. That's how they took. So they it, it was all it was like five years, I think. But that's what they basically did with God of War. They they were like we're reusing a bunch of the stuff because it would take like, and that's why they did not they're not making a third one as of right now because they're like. We don't have time for everyone to wait five years for a second game and then another five to seven years for a third game. So then so Ragnarok's gonna be like the finale of this like two part story. Oh, that's too bad. But uh speak uh doubling back around, you know what legitimately surprised me about this game? What did who the leader of the Court of Owls was? Because I swear though I, I I don't know if I texted y'all about it, but I was God, Arkham fucked me up so badly where like Black Mask took his hood off and it was a Joker. I'm like, this dude's going to take his hood off and it's going to be Joker. It's going to be some guy who they got to voice a Joker and they hit it so well in this game that I never knew about it. And I, I'm i going to be so pissed when it ends up being the Joker. And it wasn't. It was Jacob Kane. I was like, oh, I legitimately didn't see that coming. Oh, you were not surprised that the only other male character around <laughs> that side turned out to be the big bad. I mean, they could have I, not revealed who it was in general. You know. So yeah, I. Yeah. The only reason I knew who it was because I was watching a YouTube video to, to kind of like because I was a little confused and I started playing this game all the different systems like how to play it. So I watched a video and the guy's like, "You know, this game is good, but the story you already know immediately who the Court Owls guy was." I'm like, "What are you talking about?" I'm like, "Oh." You asshole. I'm like, well, and then I figured out oh, Jacob Cade before they revealed it. But had I not seen that, I wouldn't have put two and two together. And that's that's what I, I get really frustrated with things like this is I love to play a Batman game that's actually structured like a traditional murder mystery where there's three or four suspects and you don't know who it is. As opposed to, we're going to introduce one other character <laughs> who's not an established villain. And, I mean, I could, <laughs> spo- I don't want to spoil a movie that I saw recently, but it was the same thing. Where there was a big reveal, and I was like, you know, of course it's that guy. He's the only other person they've talked about in this entire movie. <laughs> you're you're going to have to, t- it's a recent movie, I want to know what it's up to the podcast. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you after, if you haven't seen it already, but... And the thing, like, because that's something I was excited when they announced the the announcement trailer was a Court of Owls, and they had the in the in that story it was the character, and he said he was Bruce Wayne's brother, and it's ambiguous. I, I don't know. It's been a while since I read the, those comics, but you never really know if he's lying or not, and that's interesting. Well, Blair, if you want to get a rehab a recap without reading them, there's a podcast episode on this on this very show about Batman Gordon. <laughs> what? So go check that out. But <laughs> yes, please keep going. <laughs> but they 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 do. I, I, it's it's funny that we I talk about how like the Court of Owls thing was was like the who was leading it wasn't a big was a big surprise for me. But I I I, wanna, I don't know if I was spoiled or if I saw it. I mean, obviously, anybody could saw it coming, but then bringing Bruce back to the Lazarus pit was not a surprise. I'm like, oh, yeah, that was bound to happen. Yeah, it's a giant plug leading back to the Batcave from his grave, which is exhumed. (laughs) I disagree. I was completely surprised, jaw dropped, when that scene happened at the end of the game. There's literal breadcrumbs. (laughs) I didn't say it was a good that I was surprised. I'm just saying I was surprised. I'm not saying that. (laughs) I mean, it goes both ways. I mean, I I should have figured out it was Jacob Kane. He's like, like Blair said, he's the only other character they reveal in this game. I'm I'm also surprised that like whenever his wife walked up, he's like, my wife will get me out of this. And she just walks up and goes, you motherfucker. I'm going to kick your fucking ass. Yeah, that was cool. And like the fact that the police are trying to murder you all game because of just you know, they're no longer working with, you know, because Batman and, and Gordon is dead. Like, I like that. That was fine. I didn't have a problem with her being against vigilantes because honestly, that makes sense. But hey, you know. So we we also go through like one of the things that I know Blair was talking to do it, but you can you should switch characters to watch everyone's cutscenes. The cutscene thing I was watching, I was already planning on doing it anyways to watch everyone's cutscenes. There's a there's a part where Barbara is like 
she's doing like some kind of weird thing where she's putting dolls up and she's trying to solve like a murder that her dad had. I legitimately thought she was recreating the scene where she got fucking shot by Joker. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. That is a fair statement. I Because there's like it. there's like a person like lying out on a table and it like legitimately looks like the way she fell in the uh in the the killing joke. Yeah, no, you're not wrong. It it it, it does. Like when you first see it, I thought the same thing that she was reenacting how she got shot because she makes a comment about her not being able to walk or something at one point or some kind of comment about her being having to heal from something. So I was like, and they never say that that happened, but I'm like, you're insinuating this. My my other also favorite part is whenever they're there. So the, the cutscenes take place in different areas in the like living room, which is like up top where they have a TV. I love how every time someone talks, you can always see the pride flag like behind someone. And that's like the funniest fucking thing ever. And also uh, Dick having a Bloodhaven bisexual coffee mug is also the best thing ever. I love oh. this game. This game gets a lot of points for me. Okay, I didn't see that. But that's cool. Um, yeah, that, oh, sorry. Go on. No, go, go ahead, Blair. That's something I wanted to bring up. Well, first thing, something that I do remember the Court of Owl comics, which frustrates me about this, because they did an annual and it was about and they did a twist on the Victor and the Mr. Freeze story where in the new 52, as opposed to Nora being his wife, Nora was someone who was already frozen that he became obsessed with and made his own relationship. And they talk about how the Court of Owls incorporated Mr. Freeze's tech into their regeneration system. And that would have been a great way to make Mr. Freeze more integral to the story because sure. all the bosses and they just seem like such a big distraction. Whereas like Arkham, they, were, they, they weave them more organically. So one of my favorite parts of this game is the emails which they also speaking about pride because they mentioned about how they should like have make pride costumes and then go out yeah. and parade and everyone thinks it's a good idea. Yes. Because a lot of the emails are written by Ashley Cooper, who's a trans woman, and she's working on the new Iron Man game from EA. I believe she's senior writer on that. And all those emails are great. Like they have ones from like like Black Canary and and Superman where he's just like, oh, he's so supportive of Dick and he just wants to know how he's doing. And it's like, oh, my God, bring these people in. I want to see Superman so bad. <laughs> oh, yeah. That was going to be in the sequel. <laughs> and you if you change characters like that gives you incentive because each character has different emails. Yeah. Jason has emails talking about how he's been going to see a therapist. I think that's pretty cool. And I didn't read the emails, even though someone told me I should. I tried, but I just didn't. I know, Blair, you're like, you should read the emails. And I started to read them. I'm like, I just can't. <laughs> and if, uh, one of my favorite things I didn't realize is that I think it was intentional on Ashley's part where she there's an email that's basically like the YouTube channel. Stop Skeletons from Fighting. <laughs> what? Like, it's a full on like, have you ever watched Stop Skeletons from Fighting? No. Oh, OK. Well, you should. It's a great channel. Uh, but it's basically a full on parody of that. And he and Uncle Derek. It was like Derek Alexander, I believe his name. He found out. And he's like, oh, my God. And she was like, yeah, I love your channel. So I wanted to make this homage. There's something new about a video game. And it's like it's a totally stop skeletons thing. OK, OK. I have no idea what that is, but this sounds cool. So I'll, I'll go with that part. Oh, OK. I might actually watch this. Apparently they play every game on the Zebo. Oh, yeah, they did a full on documentary. <laughs> and okay, they love to re they, they love to look at like weird ports of doom and like 3D games on Game Boy Advance. Like there's a lot of great stuff. You can go into a deep dive. <laughs> OK, at the end of the day, I, I think a lot of the story for this game is actually really well written. Like I like the idea that but besides the dumb thing of Talia being like, I was part of the league the whole time. It's like, yeah, no shit. But uh, <laughs> like the whole idea of like, oh, the the Lazarus, the Court of Owls has been trying to find the yacht, the Fountain of Youth, which is basically just a Lazarus pit, and then her basically sicking Raish on a uh, Batman so they could kill each. Because she, I guess, she knew they would kill each other. She also, would... isn't it League of Assassins normally, not League of Shadows? Could have swore it's League of Assassins usually. It, it's either or, Blair. Yeah, and, and honestly, full disclosure to everyone, I didn't play this game recently for this show because I played it back in May, and then I did a full playthrough, and then I started playing New Game Plus again. To get, and so it, I, it's not totally fresh in my mind. Well, this is a Batman thing, if it's League of yeah, Shadows yeah. or not. Because in this game, they call them League of Shadows. When I Googled League of Shadows, it came up that it was an offshoot of the League of Assassins. And that was the group that 
her sister Shiv is in charge of, which is not in this game, but okay. was in Arkham City. No, Bat- Arkham Origins. Batman lore is weird. We, we don't talk about Batman lore because everything changes every year. <laughs> like I sent there, like in, in one of the groups I'm in, I sent a picture of, of a Batman group. And I'm like, I don't know who these people are. And it was like Cassandra Kane, and I don't even know who they are. But it was people I did not do. Like just people I did not know who the characters were. And I'm like, I need to read more Batman. I wish things happened like more organically within missions because everything kind of happens at the Belfry. Because I'm assuming everyone, everything had to be structured in that one area. Like when I think of, say, like Spider-Man, where like Peter and Miles are out in the world. And there's a few missions uh, as payoffs. And if you're planning to play this game and you kind of stick with one character, like it can be tedious to go back and forth. But some of the payoffs, like I, I'm not a big Red Hood guy. I've never really cared for that character. But the payoff to his kind of mission chain, I don't know. You, Joe, you, oh, you're right, you didn't, you where he, he's just talking to Alfred and he's like, I'm afraid I'm going to become a monster. And he's like, no, you're not a monster. And but he just breaks down and cries and hugs Alfred. Like, it's really great stuff. It was. But, but you just might miss it. And that's the thing. Like, the first time I played this, never switched to Red Hood at all because I don't think we, we haven't even gotten to it. You had traversal abilities in this game. <laughs> uh, and instead of them being there at the top, you have to do this this knighthood mission, um, which is really tedious because uh, a lot of the side missions in this are just beating up the same couple of people over and over again. And it's really boring to get around the map, uh, which is a big problem for an open world game, especially the way this world is designed because there's like four or five different islands and it takes so long to get anywhere. Even when you unlock fast travel, (laughs) I was going to say, I disagree. Well, I agree and disagree. Because the Bat Cycle sucks. I didn't mind just cruising <laughs> around the Bat Cycle. I didn't have a huge problem with the traversal system in this game, especially after playing other games after this that are open world. But that's neither here nor there. But I played this first. But no, it just it didn't like sure it was annoying that you had to do these stupid things, in my opinion, to unlock stuff that, like Blair said, should have been there. The idea that the that each person had their own special travel. But I got over it pretty quickly and I didn't have a problem. I actually didn't mind when I put the bat cycle on and just driving wherever I was heading. It didn't bother me a whole lot. See, I, I just wish they would have did something with the bat cycle, even if there was a, a turbo boost or something you could yeah. unlock. Yes. That gave it like a little bit of something or put some weapons on. Like it doesn't have to be the tank sequences again, because I mean, towards the end you get challenges where you have to drive through rings but this is just gold brick stuff in a Lego game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, that's and I know fair. I mean, TG yeah. Games did do support on this, but even like that's why the the god the clayface mission is so interesting because you actually use the bike to chase him and you have to like dodge things and it's cool. But most of the time, you're just driving this very slow motorcycle and everything's on a bridge and the way it guides you is that it like you're off always just like looping back into a bridge and it takes forever to get anywhere and like in Arkham Knight you can kind of combine the Batmobile with your gliding and grapnel boost to get around but here like Batgirl has a glide it doesn't control as well I really want to get in the Nightwing's Fortnite glider oh don't even get me started it was okay my so stupid <laughs> my my husband didn't figure out how to use it until like the last time that we played it i mean you just with this it doesn't do anything special it just glides for a little bit then he starts to go to the the ground pretty quickly no well, you're not... you, can, you can do crunches like you can crunch up and he'll go up and oh yeah i, I didn't know i didn't this. know that i had to google it because i was trying to do the challenges and i kept crashing and i was like i feel like i'm taking crazy pills until someone uh, in a message board was like, oh, if you hold up or something, one of the sticks, because I don't think the game teaches you this. If it is, it's hidden very well that you basically like hold up and he crunches upwards and you fly. OK, That's yeah, see, cool. See, my my husband was having an issue with it. And then he figured out that you have to you're not supposed to look down because he's like, I'm dropping like a sack of bricks when I pull this thing out. Like, I'm not even using it. And then he said he figured out that you're not supposed to look down. You're supposed to look forward and he'll fly forward. Oh, like and yeah. so and another thing, too, that I'll tell anyone. Um, <laughs> I mean, we've already spoiled things. If you're at That's this fine. point, if you're going to play this, you can change the traversal from toggle to hold. Yep. I 
change it to toggle right away. Same. Um, what is that? So basically, instead of holding the trigger with the glider, you just tap it and it's out. Oh, okay. I did it for where the game makes you want to hold X all the time. Like, there's actually a lot of accessibility options in this yeah. game. I that was nice. <laughs> But like the Nightwing glider, I get it. It's like, okay, the kids like Fortnite. Here's a Fortnite glider. But all I think about is you're flying across the city on this glider. What you can do, your hands get sweaty, you get tired, you're going to fall. What happens (laughs) if you get shot? Your arm gets broken. Now I have to dangle from this thing on one arm. Like this (laughs) is the genius. Like it's so impractical. It frustrates me so much. And it's oh. so slow. There was points in this game where I had to go from one side of the map to the other with Nightwing's glider. I honestly pulled out my phone and started checking Twitter whilst I just casually put the stick up every now and then so we didn't crash into the ocean. Twitter? <laughs> what's, what's Twitter? I don't even know X. Yeah. <laughs> Shut up, Mike. <laughs> this goes how long ago I play this game. <laughs> that... That makes, it, Twitter. I just gotta make that, joke. that makes it sound like I should Google how to play uh, Red Hood, which, by the way, is just a big ghost jumping ability, which kind of cool. It's, it's a little so goofy. Boring. Yeah, it's also a little boring because you also slowly descend because he kind of misses every other like he goes lower kind of every with every jump. Like I could I could probably cross the river if I was trying hard enough. But there's times where like I was like, I'll just jump across the river. And like I'm like halfway at the river and I'm like, I'm not making this. And I just fell. And what's crazy about it, because when you think about like Robins, which I also didn't like, because it's like um, you move this target and it bamps him like Nightcrawler. OK, <laughs> Robins made no sense, but I enjoyed it. He's, but, he's teleporting using the watchtower, which makes yeah. absolutely no sense. But and it's a it's comic book logic. People are coming back to life. There's mud people and an ice man and a giant metal gear. I have I'm, ghost powers. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I'm looking for... I'm, I'm playing a Batman <laughs> game and expecting logic. I know. But So the so. missions are also designed... Like Some of the story missions are designed where you can't use those abilities. Like They have to take into account that you may not have bothered to do them. So like in the final mission where you basically have to follow the breadcrumbs to the Batcave... I was using Batgirl and I was like, okay, I'm just going to glide over here. But the game wouldn't let me. And I kept falling into a pit because you have to use your, you have to like knock down the points and then grapple to them because you can't use the game has to be designed in such a way that, oh, you might not have this ability. Plus Robin's ability wouldn't work underground. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. You're talking about all near the end of the game. Yeah. And that, that's fine. I, I get I, I get your complaint and I but yeah, I didn't have a problem with it, but I do completely get your complaint. It's just the weird decisions in this game, because as much as I'm griping on it and I mean, and that's the thing, it's it's a thing where it's like, I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed because I want to <laughs> and people love this game. And I, and that's why I wanted to give it a second shot, because I, I felt something was wrong with me. Because people were saying, like, oh, yeah, it's actually really good. And I was like, I like these characters. I like DC Comics. I love the one game, the WB Games Montreal did. But you're just not into action RPG type stuff like this, I think. I I, I can be. Like, the recent God of War games are still a skill level. But it's just the the world is not that interesting. Get around is not an interesting Something I missed in all superhero games, and that's even with the most recent Spider-Man games. Uh, you cannot top the goon talk in the Arkham series. Like, just listening to the goons have their regular conversations is so interesting and funny. And the random mooks in this are just so uninteresting and boring. I remember they introduced the first person with the drone and it's what do they call it? The homie pew pew or something? Yes, that I actually like. I had to sit there with my like mouth, my hand over my mouth, being like, "Wow!" I was like, this "Someone is- got paid money to write that line, and then someone got paid money to record it." Yeah, like <laughs> I, I, I was like, "This is bad. That was bad dialogue. You should be ashamed. <laughs> you should be ashamed." Well, all the and doubling back into that because of the story, because of all that, I love all the interactions with all the with all the bad kids together. You know, I do too. I uh, I love that. Yeah, Jason talks about how he he's he's still treated he's still treating himself differently because he's been dead once. 
day uh tim talking about how like what is it him trying to figure out how to do chess with alfred and then you have dick i think dick's supposed to be like he's trying to be batman and they tell him like he can't he shouldn't be batman and then uh, i said it earlier but barbara's weird thing about her not remembering what her dad looks like which is weird because it's like I, I have photographic memory i don't remember what my dad looks like you didn't keep photos around like just go back <laughs> home and like look at yourself i'm sure you have a picture of your dad somewhere i mean i don't but and like the the, <laughs> develop, the development of the start of them where they're so confrontational to where they end up and that's the thing, like, my favorite part is just the out-of-costume bits back in the Belfry. They're really good, and, yeah. like, even just, like, because I would start switching characters and make sure every chapter of this game, because there would be different dialogue that would be unlocked, essentially, in the Belfry, where, like, there's the one where Red Hood does a dance game, and then, they real, and then he starts having, like, flashbacks to him being dead or something, and, like, just little things, and I'm like, this is really good! For each character is kind of showing you, and then you get an achievement for each one too as you finish it. Like it was, I really liked. It. I really liked the the way it the way it linked the four together and everything they're going through after Batman died and they're each trying to come to their own. Like all that was so good with these characters. And something that uh, I, I wanted to bring up because I feel it's important. Uh, so this summer I was at a panel uh, for Allison Court, who if you don't know is the voice of Claire Redfield and Jubilee on. The original X-Men series, she's not going to be in X-Men 97. Uh, and she was talking about being a voice director and how they wanted to cast a person of color as a white Disney princess. And she was told flat out, you can't do it because once the MAGA crowd find out that this white person is voiced by someone of color, they are going to freak out and that person's life is going to be made a living hell. Mm-hmm. But in this game... Red Hood is a Caucasian male voiced by an Asian man. Oh. Uh, the same same actor who played Mr. Negative in the Spider-Man game. Steven, sorry, pronounce your last name. Wang, O-Y-O-U-N-G. Yeah, it's, a, it's Mr. Negative. Oh, huh. I suppose I didn't realize that because I, cool. I played both Spider-Man games recently. <laughs> Also, uh, go- going into my weird, like, favorite character, I, at first when I saw this, I wasn't a big fan of, like, Red Hood being the tank and Jason Todd being, like, this big, like, buff guy. But playing this actually made me, like, it ha- may- actually made it, like, grow on me. And I actually really, like, enjoy the new character design because it's something different because I'm sick of always, like, here's here's Dick Grayson. Here's Jason Todd. Oh, look, they're exactly the same, except their hair is a little bit different. And I guess it's supposed to imply the big scar in his head is supposed to be from the Joker beating him with the crowbar. Oh, yeah. yeah that's how I took it. Yeah, me too. Yeah, okay. And I gotta say, I am so happy that Joker is not in this damn game. Honestly so surprised. Happy. Legitimately surprised. That's because the game feels like a sequel to Arkham, like it was supposed to be. And it's fine. Like, me and Ken have brought this up before. Ken especially has. Like, Joker doesn't need to be in everything with Batman, and so much mm-hmm. stuff that isn't a comic has Joker in it. It was kind of nice to get away from Joker. And I really love the fact that Court Owls in this. I was also looking up that there's not that much Court Owls stuff. There's only two comic arcs where they really like play a big part in one movie and then this game. And that's it for Court Owls. And they're in a season of Gotham at some point. You know what uh, none of us played, though, which is part of this game as well. And I don't even know. If, well, I'm pretty sure Blair knows about it. I don't even know if Mike knows about it. I'm not sure. Did you play Siege Mode? What's Siege I mode? tried because basically... Po- there was post-launch content where there's essentially Marvel's Avengers-style raids. Uh, I think they're up to four players. Yes. Yeah, I saw it. And one is about Starro, and the other yeah. you just play the um, you fight, do random floors, and you fight the villains again. Yeah, you you have to pre- you have to protect Starro, and Starro's like I think like controlling people to come free him. So you basically just have to, like, it, it's basically like a raid mode where you have to protect him from people trying to break him out. And he has, like, goofy lines of dialogue and stuff. And you have, like, mm. the email, the email triggers from Wonder Woman. And she says something like, oh, Starro's there, but we don't have time or something because you guys would take care of it. <laughs> okay, that's kind of cool. I, I saw a little bit about it. Like, the hero- I saw heroic things where, like, you need, a, you know, you need to have your power levels this high. And I'm like, that's nice. And I just never came back. <laughs> the power I can tell, like, high. Also, this like you have to get like nth metal gear, so it's like the most epic rare gear and chips. I just and it, didn't give a shit. But luckily, you don't have to. Like, you can just play this game and experience it, and you don't have to worry about stuff like that. Especially on easy or very easy. I mean, this game did stealth, but it doesn't make you do stealth that much. 
<laughs> for the most part. Like, you don't have to be stealth, which is fine. I mean, let's talk about that for a second, because, okay. oh boy, I do miss stealth games where people weren't absolute morons. They just basically stare at walls. Yeah. Like, you'll have a guy next to his friend, and I'll be choking him out, and he'll be like, oh, I wonder if it's going to rain tomorrow. And then you get him, because you, you kind of have these bonuses where if you take down... It's like, oh, get so many enemies without being seen or take silently take down so many enemies and you can do it, but it's really pointless because it takes longer to set up the stealth kills and what it is that is to beat the living hell out of people. Yeah, I mean, it depends, I guess, if you want to do it. I mean, I would do some of like the side objectives for different missions, but not often. It just wasn't my thing. And that's I mean, you don't want to do the Arkham comparison, but like the Predator sequences in Arkham where they get harder as you go along and people get frightened and they get panicky and they start shooting and then there's traps set up that you have to deal with. And this is just people are have the same patrol routes or they're just staying there and doing nothing. But that's not just this game. This is like a lot of stealth, even like the most recent Spider-Man games. It's not that hard to kind of do stealth, especially in the new one. And it didn't bother me, but I, I get where you're coming from. They were dumb, but I like dumb sometimes. So, uh, time for one part that I specifically didn't play. How was the final boss? Because didn't you fight, like, isn't it like a three-stage boss fight where you fight Bruce, and then you also fight, like, Talia, and then she pulls out, like, the most annoying weapon ever? It's real simple. Oh, yeah? I, I struggled a bit the first time I played, but I think because I was playing the entire game wrong. Uh, but the second go-around, it was a joke. <laughs> okay. I also played on very easy at that point because I, I got to a point with this game. I'm like, it's Saturday or no, Friday, Friday or Saturday. I beat this game. I'm like, I want to move on to the next game. So I need to finish this, you know, right now. <laughs> so I just put on very easy because Travis, who was supposed to be in this episode, but unfortunately couldn't make it. He got, he got sick. He was like, just playing on very easy. He's like, enjoy the story. They just have more health. <laughs> you know, they're just going to be more spongy and they're already spongy enough. So And oh. that's something that bothered me was that like, because you have skill trees and you get more powerful and you have better weapons. And and the way I, th- I remember talking to my my former roommate about this and I said, it's like essentially if you play Pokemon and you go to the, the entire map and you go back to the first town and the Rattatas that you killed are just as powerful as you are now because it never feels as you're getting stronger. Yes and no. The the story missions I felt cap out at whatever level they're supposed to be. The regular premeditated crimes, they level up with you. Okay. But not like the mission based stuff. Like for Clayface, Harley Quinn, it would tell me. Oh, yeah, you have to be level. 21 to 24 or something. Yeah. And if you wait a while, it would be like just nothing except for the boss fights. Same with like the story missions. It's, luckily, none of those. It's just when you're running around in the city that level up with you. So that way you have a challenge. And that's most of the game is just yes. fighting those random dummies in the cities. But which I, I loved it. Mm. I, I usually don't do this in a game, but every single night I was out, I would do every single premeditated crime. I would stop majority of little crimes I would see. I just couldn't stop playing. And I don't know that just because I hadn't played an open world game since Infamous 2, I think is the last one I played for this podcast. So it's been a while and I was just absorbed into it or what it was, but I was just... I did all like I did all the ones where you're trying to put the the stuff for Bruce Wayne. So you see him dancing in front of a penguin. I did all those missions. I did all the little mission to get the audio logs. I didn't do the the stuff where you had to glide and do all that crap. I tried once and said, nope. But I was just in love with this game for a while. It was weird. I really loved all the open world content. (laughs) Like I would even just fly around the city. I mean, I got fast travel and I started fast traveling more. But I would even just every time that Montoya or... With other people that you talk to, Penguin would be like, hey, you know, come back here. You know, you finished, you did, you did, you beat up X amount of people here, get some free stuff. And I would go, oh, sure. I go over, get the experience and go back to whatever I was doing every single time. I, I really, I really love Penguin in this game and I'm bummed. I mean, it's different takes, but in Suicide Squad, I believe Penguin is uh, one of your gun dealers and it's Nolan North. So it's like of Cockney it Penguin again. But in this game, it's Elias to Fexus. And I really love the legit penguin and just his his cadences for his voice. It was good. I I, I like the fact that he's working with you. Like you find out that the court of owls didn't like him and he was the one person not getting out of jail and had to serve his actual terms and stuff like mm-hmm. little things like that. And that scene when you go when you go to him and he's t- stuck up to the wall with a towel. And he's like, I'm sorry, but it was either you or me. And he betrays you. and You get thrown in the frickin pit. 
God, that is straight from that Court of Owls comic in New Fifty Two, and that that was a fucking great scene being in the being in the labyrinth. Oh, I and, loved it, and that's something that's that's. I guess you may you might be able to replay missions. I know you can replay bosses because that's probably different for each character you use. And I know the comic you're talking about is basically where where Batman's in the labyrinth and you're mm-hmm. essentially turning the comic around as you're reading it to kind of mm-hmm. go along with his madness. And I liked how they they kind of interpreted that for this game. I also because I took Robin down there with me and there are comments Robin makes later that affected the fact that he went down there and it's like it fucked with him. And I'm like, I bet you whoever you take down there is really traumatized from that experience. Yeah, there I, the the gameplay I was watching, which I'm I'm also kind of glad the the dialogue between uh the dialogue between Bruce and Red Hood at the from the final boss fight, the game is really good because Red Hood's basically like, oh, I've I've come back from this, Bruce. You can come back from it, too. And he, he's cool. like, he's like, Jay, they told me you were dead, Jason. You can't be dead a second time. And he's like, I can come back whenever I want to. But there's <laughs> there's also a really funny comment whenever you meet Harley for the first time. And she's like, Red Hood. See, I still see you're still built like an ox. And I'm like, OK, so he's always just been a big dude. OK, I really en- appreciate that. The cutscenes are a little bit different depending on who you have from the comments that are made like that. That's a nice touch. But no, I feel like Robin just was affected by it because it's just such a powerful scene being down there. And I love the fact that it mimicked the comic. Like, I thought that was just incredible. <laughs> and like him just being like hallucinating and like you die over and over again. He's like, I just did this. I don't understand. And I'm like, well, yeah, it fits. It fits down there because you're being gassed. Like you're drugged up, too. So you're not what you're seeing is not really what you're seeing, too. And I love that. I love the fact that the talons are just. They're using some of the stuff in the Lazarus pit to make talons. And I'm like, this is awesome. And I didn't like fighting talons just because you had to do the 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 strong range that you had to hold down wide. And I didn't like that. But other than that, they were fine. <laughs> it was just annoying, but it was fine. You had to switch up the combat a little bit, but it was cool having talons. I, I, I just love everything Court of Owls. And because of this game, I am now at some point going to be doing the other comic arc of Court of the Owls on this podcast, hopefully recording next month. So because I just I need more Court of Owls. Is it like a redo? Like they yeah, like they they remake the comics every like year or whatever? No, it, I don't really know about it. It's just an, it was just a big like it was a big event, and it has to do with them as the villain, and it's the only other villain arc they have, like main one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're in a bunch of little. Com- they're in a couple different little comics here and there. They're mentioned. They're in some of the other New Fifty Two run, and then a Robin War, which I don't know if that's. I think that might be part of the re- after Rebirth, but I can't. I didn't look at the years. I just know that Court Owls is the main villain, and so we're gonna read it. Well, it didn't it shake out for the new 52 where the first six issues were kind of the story about like Bruce Wayne's brother. And then the next arc was also like them and it crossed over into other Batman books. There's Court of Owls and there's City of Owls. And then, yeah, like they go and attack. And then some of the other Batman books also had like little crossover issues. Yeah, there's all that during that time. It's mostly them just rescuing people that are then either killed or not in the book is what it is. It's a really good arc, though. But you just don't get a lot of you just don't get a lot of quarter owls yet. And I just really like them. And I was surprised that they're not in more comics. And I was looking this up because of this game. I got so into it. And I'm like, I need more quarter owls. Well, I mean, without kind of the main, I guess there was a series called Talon. I never read it, so I don't know who was the main person. Because kind of without a guiding force, it's more or less just like the hand in Marvel. It's just a zombie army. <laughs> so what do you kind of do with that i guess that's up to like a writer to kind of take it over from there yeah, i don't know i'm gonna look up talon comic i because i just don't know what i heard i think i've heard of it but i'm not sure oh i'm curious it was by james tinian but i don't know anything else about it at the moment but yes there's a couple of them okay i didn't even know this was a thing now i'm curious <laughs> okay you you came out in 2014 all right you got me another book that i'm gonna have to read now awesome because i i try to read a lot of comics now i just really enjoy reading them so Oh, there's a whole bunch of talent stuff. It went for a, it went for a bit. It looks like it went sixteen. It went seventeen issues. Might as well be a hundred in new comic terms. <laughs> yeah, runs don't make it very long anymore, do they? Everything's a mini series, from what I hear. I don't. I don't buy comics. I don't. I just read older comics and stuff. I don't really buy comics at all anymore. Just yeah, I buy other things. So like games, <laughs> lots and lots of games. Right. I, I did try to think we mentioned the fact that like you have different people that give you missions or just that are just like go do this essentially so at least you're getting more rewards for your trouble. Uh there is the one when you first find the court of owls and you find like the intruder, then they drop you in that big cage and you gotta like dodge all the traps to get out. I did not like that at all, by the way. 
<laughs> Not at all. That took a lot of tries. And finally, when you do finally when you do catch Jacob Kane, you get shot an arrow by League of a uh, League of Shadows. This is by Talia. And that's when Talia Ghoul essentially comes out and like, oh hey, it was all a trap. Ha <laughs> ha. You guys gave me right what I wanted. And then also early in this game, you find out Kirk Langstrom was murdered, and I for I was like, I remember that name. It didn't click that that's Man Bat until way <laughs> later in the game. Yeah, how do we feel about there being forty man bats in this game? Terrifying and fine. I think the movie does that. The one we've already done, Mike. The Bad Blood. Yeah, didn't Bad Blood do that? I don't remember. Yeah, cause that they they've been doing a weird thing where they've been making it where like Kirk Landstrom isn't man bat. He just kind of makes other things man bats and other man creatures. <laughs> I'm fine with that. Like I. I unfor- unfortunately spoiled that for myself. I was looking up. I was looking up that last chap, that second to last chapter. And I wanted to see what the boss fight was, if there was one, and said man bad. I'm like, ah, damn it! I would have liked to have been surprised. <laughs> but no, I was fine. It, it's cool. You had to go chase some man bats around. Like that was fine. I love the murder mysteries in this, where it's essentially, oh, here's a bullet from this district. Here's a person who got murdered in this district. <laughs> it's like, okay, yeah, it's those two things. You're just like playing search for the clue to find the two ones that are most obvious. Those are fine. And also with the clue stuff, if you just put the wrong stuff in enough times, it just gives you it just says you want it. You want the solution? I go, yes, yes, I do. Here's your participation nice badge. It was either that or look online. So I'm like, well, I don't want if, you're, if I don't have to look online, I'll just hit buttons. So you tell me the answer. So, well, most of the stuff is like, here's a like, <laughs> it's almost like my brother when he played a Zelda game. He always used to click through the dialogue and just read the highlighted stuff. <laughs> so he'd just be a blah, 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 temple of time, blah, 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 hero of time, blah, 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 hook shot. OK, and then he'd go. And this is just like blah, 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 bullet in southwest Gotham, blah, 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 murdered in southwest Gotham. Like, OK, it's those two. Those will bring me to the body. I didn't mind the little things where you go. I thought that was kind of cool. Where you got like you had you did have a decent amount of detective stuff in this game too, which was fine. I really missed Detective Vision, and you just had the AR it was not the same, but it's fine. yeah, the, the interface is kind of confusing because I know you were talking about doing the missions where you have to plant the evidence yeah. to basically trick people into thinking that Bruce Wayne and Batman are the same person and uh, triggering like the plates. And it's really hard to know that you can turn those off because the icon is so small. Yeah, it <laughs> took me a little bit to get the hang of those. And yeah, I, I but then I and also once I just played as Batgirl, I think a Batgirl couldn't be seen by cameras at one point or anything. So I just walk through lasers or her or Robin. One of them, like nothing affected them after a while. So I'm like, oh. yeah, it's both. Robin is a big okay. self person. So I know like one of the the upgrade trees with Robin is that you can stealth take down the heavier enemies. Okay. Robin okay. was fun. Robin and Nightwing both were the my ended to become my like the ones I enjoyed the most later on. Batgirl not, I enjoyed her a lot at first and later on I was not as into her. I was I enjoyed, Batgirl Nightwing mains. I, I enjoyed playing as Red Hood, especially if I was shooting guys with guns. He had a I had, I saved up all my skill points to get his two knighthood level ups because he has this weird like ghost shot, which also Funny enough, a lot of his skills are the kind of the same thing that Talia does in her boss fight. But like he has like a, the ability where he basically shoots out like ghost bullets that like track enemies and hits them. So I got the I got the two abilities where I think he sends out a second shot and then he also the lock on because you have to lock on a certain amount of enemies before you before you fire. And if you just fire as soon as you activate, it, it won't hit anyone. So I also got that. And I, I liked playing him as a lot. It was pretty fun. He wasn't. I didn't like him at first, but when I started playing him later on and understood him better, I enjoyed him more because I was kept going for melee and you can't do melee with him as much. You need, you're supposed to do range. Mm-hmm. And once I understood that concept, I got they got better. Yeah, you're you're also supposed to do like headshot when you can because you can aim his guns. You're supposed to do like yeah. a bunch of headshots too. I saw that was very powerful when I started screwing screwing around more. Game just grew on me over time a lot. Like this was, I looked, uh, I put about almost 24 hours into this game, and I did a good amount of stuff. Got a lot of achievements other people didn't even have, which I always like it when I get achievements other people don't have on, on when I look at Steam. No, it's just a ton of fun. I'm trying to get else we should mention. I mean, seeing Bruce Wayne again at the end was pretty damn cool. That that really definitely made me want to clap. See, it did until the end. I, oh boy, do mm-hmm. I not like the, um, well, the, to bring him back and then kill him, I think is really stupid. Because I think you could have, I mean, there's your DLC, like, okay, I'm back, but... 
uh, you can play as Batman. I, I mean, they, they want to give these characters a spotlight, and I'm I'm kind of glad they committed into not doing it, but at the same time, they bring him back, and he sacrifices himself to stop the bad thing from happening. And his speech, basically about the 1% and all of that stuff, was the most blatant, in-your-face, unhidden, poorly written stuff it's i get what they're trying to say it's important made me laugh it Not was <laughs> so blatant it's like okay if you're gonna do this subtlety is your friend not basically like i don't worry about the criminals they're fine what i worry about is the one percent i'm like oh for god's sakes <laughs> but it fits it fits 2022 2023 it fits kind of the yeah. atmosphere i i agree but there's but no, I, you're not wrong it, it wasn't <laughs> subtle and it's like it's especially coming from a rich man to begin with or a, like a super <laughs> yeah. filthy rich character being like the one percent of the ones you can't trust i'm part of that one percent but yeah you know I, and I mean, I, I'm rewatching Batman the Animated Series again right now, just as I did the same time last year. And to hear Ferris Boyle talk about the wage slaves taking over and Bruce Wayne just saying, I think I'm going to feel ill. That's cute. Him basically giving like a taken straight from a TikTok, like whatever message, like <laughs> eh, not so great. <laughs> I get it. It just it made I really like I think that's sort <laughs> I really like when the one percent of the villain for some reason. It's weird. I just really like that idea. <laughs> I, I really appreciate it. It made me laugh my ass off. It made me chuckle. Like, ah, oh, you're right. That's what, that's what makes the court owl so cool. The villain. It's the rich. Huh. Oh, okay, that banquet when you have to go and record the voices. That was pretty cool. I did like that where all the rich people are there, and a lot of them are like the court of owls, and that was just cool. I just like the court of owls a lot. I don't think anything else we should mention. Oh, and you have like the different enemies. We have you have the heavy types you fight. What have the shields we talked about off and on? Like they're fine. I mean, the enemy varieties aren't isn't huge in this game, but it was it was fine. Did you did you want to go over uh, Travis's remarks that he sent to you um, for the lat in shelf stack? Yeah, that's what I'm okay. about. Anything else you guys want to say before we go on to questions, comments, memories? No. OK. All right. I should probably pull that up before I ask that said question. Oh, yeah. While we're doing that, my comment at the top. Boy, they really doubled down in their Ricky Martin cover, didn't they? You know, that that was probably when at the moment where I was like getting really into the game because I started playing and I was like, oh, this is fucking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> There's a Ricky Martin song in here. He, that's uh whenever when you break when you the first thing in the mission with harley quinn they're playing live in libido loca and they that's play why i recognize that friends. song <laughs> that's why okay, i, I, I heard it i'm like <laughs> i really like this song by a female I'm like i can't remember i don't know what song this i can't remember what song this is but this is really good with a female singer i did not realize it was live in la vida loca me, 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 me. okay that's why i no wonder my, i liked it that was my introduction it didn't make any sense to me at the time now it does now I yeah. want to go look that up. And they play it again I, during the credits. Yeah, I was. Uh, I, I think whenever that song started, I, I was like, um, I was like really feeling it, and I, I was actually having a lot of fun on that part. Like, oh, that Harley Quinn shit was awesome. Harley Quinn's crazy. We need a song about being crazy. Uh, what about living Libby to Loco? I'm like, oh, perfect. <laughs> hey, you know what? It worked. It worked. <laughs> I didn't even I realize was that like, was the song, and now I can't believe I didn't re- realize I was it like, was the song. What is this? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm gonna have to look this up again. Oh, it just, it, just, it it fit Harley Quinn. It fit. I just remember thinking that, wow, this really fits the part that I'm in, and I just I, couldn't figure out what song it was. I'm I'm always a sucker for like like playing like either music or playing like something really good whenever you're like fighting in a in a boss fight, especially when it's like kind of like a optional boss fight or whatever so yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm a i'm also a sucker if you're on a farm and they're playing a song in the in the background while you're lighting up fireworks and fighting shadow demons i'm a sucker for that yeah and it's weird because i have like three or four nickels for that <laughs> <laughs> all right uh, <laughs> questions comments or memories from the i watched the entire old blood super replay group from joshua caleb I played a chunk of it, and I very much enjoyed being Batgirl, but the early progression pacing is a grind, and the little detective segments are cool in theory, but often just became pixel hunts. But overall, it is a fine game, in quotations. Probably the most average a modern Batman game could be. Okay. From Frank Hurley, as I get older, I need a game on two budgets, money and time, and since this one was announced, I knew damn well it was going to be available for nineteen ninety nine in a Walmart bin eventually. I am excited to play it at some point, just waiting on the right price point. That's fair. Should not pay $70 for this game. Uh, Uh, From Rudy Mace, 
The game is a very watered down version of Arkham Knight. Combat is way more sluggish and choppy compared to Batman with less gadgets and ways of handling enemies. The, the city is significantly brighter than previous installments. The lighting is poor and it feels extremely empty compared to any of the Arkham games. The cutscenes are well done, but anything gameplay related falls short of previous entries. Apparently okay. you didn't play Arkham Origins where everybody's out for Christmas and no one's out in the streets. Yeah, as, as much as people, as much as Ham Hannah that comment is, I'll, I'll always say, like, people always argue, like, if anyone ever argued, like, oh, well, there's not a lot of people in this game. There's never anyone in any of these games. Arkham Origins has its Christmas. Arkham City is, I guess, it's a, a supposed to be, yeah, it's a jail. And then Arkham Knight, they use the excuse that uh, the fear toxin is going throughout the city, so everyone's evacuated. So there's never really anyone in any of these games. Yeah, but then Spider-Man came along and, like, there were people in the streets and you're saving people. <laughs> Wait, you, you, you can argue with, like, the Spider-Man game, but you can't argue with any other Batman game. All the Oof. Batman games don't have anyone in the streets. For sure. And and I know for, like, say, everything up to night, it was probably just, well, it's the Xbox gen- or 360 generation, so we can't really do that many people on the streets at one time. It's part of the technology. But Arkham Knight, yeah... There's no excuse there because it's really weird being a superhero, but you're not saving anyone. <laughs> That's fine. You're beating up people. That's fine. <laughs> yeah. From uh, Shud Dish, it's fine, not worth seventy, but definitely worth twenty to twenty-five. I mean, it, I don't think any game worth seventy. The only game I'm paying seventy for, unfortunately, is Tears of the Kingdom because I don't have a choice. <laughs> Agreed. If I want to play that someday uh, from Devin Lake, I've been thinking of downloading this. I saw the bad reviews like you and initially lost interest. However, everyone I know that's played it has said it's fun, but nothing great. Maybe lowering expectations is what this game needs. Yeah. I mean, I went into a low expectations and had a fucking blast. So yeah, play it with low expectations and then you'll have fun. And just don't, you can't expect Arkham. You just can't. Because mm-hmm. if you do, you will be very upset. Especially because this is, this very specifically is not made by anyone in a, uh whatever it's called player well <laughs> made by montreal they made arkham origins yeah Isn't it made by montreal yes yeah. who did arkham origins and and the, the statement don't expect arkham it's true but at the same time this game is coming out after guardians of the galaxy after marvel spider-man after arkham knights you're expecting a certain level of quality and people are apologetic of this game and i think it's people love it but then there's also people who think i love it as a seven whereas something like the arkham series were so transformative and the quality for what a batman game even one with the batman family is is so high so for this just to for people to say oh yeah it's right on game pass or it's right for 25 dollars i think that's the more damning thing not like it don't it's a and I think people are saying it should be Arkham quality, not it has to be a carbon copy of Arkham Knight. That's fair. I just know that when I first started playing, I was expecting Arkham Knight, and it took me a bit to remember I'm not playing Arkham Knight, and I have to not do that. And that was the same thing with, I'd say, Marvel Spider-Man. Because I remember the first time I played that, I was also trying to play, like, Arkham Knight. <laughs> because that's kind of, like, what the benchmark for superhero yeah. games was. That's fair. Okay. And from the official Laser Time community, uh, first one from Trash Bandicoot. I'm sure that's his real name. Uh, interesting. I'm glad to hear that I finally got a PS5 the other day and just downloaded it. I, was too, I too was initially excited but worried because of the reviews. It wasn't an issue because I couldn't play it until yesterday, but I decided to try it. When I finish RoboCop, I'll dive in. All right. And from Philip Monroe, I was the same, but I grabbed it on Game Pass. I've only played through the tutorial missions, but I'm excited to play more. From Jake Terrell, this game rules. Lots of great character moments and references to the comics. Combat is fantastic, and all four characters play different. Bogged down by a Destiny-ass loop mechanic, but you can pretty much ignore it and just play the game. It stands pretty well with the Arkham games. From Jim Price, if you don't expect to be an Arkham game, it's pretty fun. (laughs) From Colby Johnson, I beat it last week and I absolutely loved it. From Michael DiMaggio, I'm having a hard time getting adjusted to the gameplay, especially with the traverse system. I keep trying to glide, so I'm still kind of split on it. But I can continue playing it to see based on your critique. Okay, I hope you enjoy it. And from Joseph's story, I wish the game wasn't based around loot and crafting. It's unnecessary and brings down the game as a whole for me. Not every game needs to be Destiny or Borderlands. That being said, I think the game is fine. The story is interesting, so that be what eventually brings me back, as I do want to see how it plays out. Combat is a bit of a slog sometimes, with some fights dragging on way too long. I can imagine that further upgrades to all the characters will help in that regard, but it's slow going. Finally, Barbara Gordon for the win. 
from Andrew Harbour. I thought the reviews are way out of line personally. It's not Arkham City, but I think it definitely holds its own among Arkham Origins and Knight. People still didn't like Knight, did they sometimes? I know I didn't at first. I fucking loved it last time, but if I remember correctly. It's been a while. <laughs> All right. And from Alex Homito, it was a cool time. I think the story was very predictable and it, it, it hit way too many cliches for the four person group dynamic for me personally. I did enjoy the side activities and I really think this is one of those that should have had should have had a performance mode. I remember the the developers saying that the world was so detailed that 60 frames per second wouldn't be feasible after playing through the game. I personally didn't see why it couldn't have been, but I'm no dev. Last boss was way too hard. I nearly walked away and I can't say I was glad that I didn't. I like this middle. I like the middle a lot. Discovering side activities was cool, but the main story was meh as hell. I love Batman and his family. I'm glad they got a game. I wish it was better. Okay. Those are all fair, fair statements. <laughs> And from Carl Schofield, I'm going to try it again, but I was having such a hard time getting into it. But it is a Batman adjacent, so I have to beat it. And from Jordan Ching, I bought it on sale and enjoyed what little I played of it. I decided to wait until they fixed some of the performance issues, but I'm looking forward to finishing it sometime in the future. Okay. And from, I think this is the, yeah, the last group I have from Giant Bomb. I got more than I thought I did, so. Uh, from Neil Fowler, this game that could have been was better than it is. The combat straight up doesn't feel good to play and the entire open world system is clunky and un- unintuitive. It really doesn't help, but the story feels very half-baked, just a massive disappointment on all fronts. They should have done a straight Nightwing or Batman, Batman Beyond game. I mean, I would love a Batman Beyond game. We're never getting it, but I'd love one. Oh, that'd be so good. Yeah, one day. <laughs> yeah. Well, not not if you read the Warner Brothers CEO manifesto. Oh, you gotta wait until that fucker's out. So I uh, yeah, I gave that guy like another year, especially with the IRS apparently looking into him shelving movies for tax reasons. <laughs> well, they you had know? something where it was like, Oh, we want to leverage live services for all of our games going forward. Oh and it's like tell me that. Yep. Oh yeah, it was in like they had a transcript of a CEO meeting. Warner Brothers Discovery, and then a whole hubbubaloo came out that Wonder Woman might have it. But they're like, no, 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 it's not going to have it, even though Mordor kind of had it, the second one. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, I, I don't trust them until the game actually comes out. I mean, if they can find a way to put... like The, the thing with Game of Services, though, you can't, if you make every game a Game of Service, you're just going to eat each other, because... The game of the services, you're only going to have certain people that are going to play. Like, this whole idea that every gamer you're going to get is going to buy all three, four of your games and then keep playing them and paying for them. Like, it's not going to happen. I mean, Square Enix has already shut down by 20. Yeah. Like, they have a graveyard of dead live service games. You just need to get away. I mean, I, I'm hoping that. Like, I mean, I play Marvel Snap and I pay Marvel Snap every month. Like, they get my 10 bucks. But, you know, it works for that. Yeah. They do it with everything. These people are expecting people to pour in, like, which is even weirder because Fortnite has different collabs like every other week. Don't expect people to pour hundreds of thousands of dollars into, like, oh, we're going to release, like, like give an example, Suicide Squad. Oh, we're going to don't. You can get the original costumes and you can get costumes. Like, I'm not going to pay for all of that. I'm going to pay for whatever I like and then that's it. Like, yeah. You know? I mean, I've never, other than Marvel Snap, I have never really got into a game where I keep spending money on it every month like that. Like, that just doesn't happen. Have you seen a uh, go look up the the de- uh, dead or alive the recent one? I think they said that all the costumes cost like three hundred dollars for that game. <sighs> Street Fighter Six tried to do something like that too. I thought some of the got was some stuff or Mortal Kombat did it. Somebody did it, and it's just Mortal I mean, Kombat just, was I paid twelve dollars for a Halloween fatality. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, there's dumb shit like that, but again, it's just like just don't do it. Like just play the game what it is. If you don't like it, wait till it's cheap. It will be. Most games are, and just. Yeah, like don't don't fall into the, these traps, and that and that's just. But I mean, gaming as a whole, something's gonna have to change. Because these AAA, like you can't keep spending millions upon millions of dollars on a game and be like, well, we only sold a million copies, so we don't make enough, so we're shutting everybody down. Like you need to find a way to make this profitable, and you need to stop being stupid, and maybe stop paying your CEO so much. But hey. All right. <laughs> There's my little rant from Joey Gills. I tried playing it last week, and I fucking hated how the movement felt. I uninstalled it. <laughs> from keith o'donnell i ended up enjoying it for what it was for me it was a three out of five game that violently flirted with being both a two out of five or a four out of five i'm a mark for any bat family shenanigans and fought with myself over how much i enjoyed or hated the experience every step of the way in the end it deserved a little more polish and a little more variety and a little less hate from alan J. I i played it for half an hour my favorite part was that the non-lethal option involved repeatedly smashing two batons into a guy's skull 
I don't know what they're talking about. I shot like several guys in the fucking face. But hey, remember those bullets only stunned them. They tested it. Remember? You saw the scene? Yeah. They tested it. Yeah, they tested it. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And from Nicholas London, playing it with my partner right now and having a blast. From Robert Seal, it was far better than I was expecting. I mean, there were a full Bastida's worth of bugs and glitches, and there was plenty of stuff that I didn't like, but it was well. It was worth one good playthrough. Also, the amount of character-specific dialogue and cutscenes, depending on who you took into the mission, was really cool. From Nathan Gold, I played for about three hours and couldn't get into it all. The combat is just not compelling, and the ninety-nine percent, and that's ninety-nine percent of the game. And last comment. From James Nathan, God, God, this game is an absolute ass. Combat feels terrible. Getting around is anything but smooth. It's slow. It's glitchy. It's just a terrible product through and through and ruins whatever glimpse of redeeming quality the story could bring. I don't think he liked it at all. Okay. All right. And before we go to Shelf Stacker Box, I should give away a code. Ooh. Because I need to get rid of codes. Here is Baldur's Gate Enhanced Edition. So if you want to play the first Baldur's Gate, here you can. The Steam code is M I. H six nine Q T P two P N T K V T. That is your code for Baldur's Gate Enhanced Edition for Steam. So congratulations, somebody. All right, and Blair, why don't you go first? Shelf stacker box. This is firmly a stack for me. I wouldn't put it in the box. I was really overly harsh when I first played it unfairly so which is why i re-reviewed it for comicbookvideogames.com go check it out there are things that i do like it's just a lot of things that i don't and it's again it's a case of i'm not angry i'm just disappointed because i expect more from this team especially coming off of how much i love batman arkham origins and i'm just really hungry for dc games because there's been a bunch of marvel games and this is you know, there's no Superman, there's no Green Arrow, Green Lantern, and I maybe put too much faith on this one to kind of get me in. But now it's on Game Pass and PlayStation and Super Turbo Ultra Revival or whatever. Go check it out for yourself. All right. And Joe? Uh, I had as much fun with it, but like I said, this game does does have some issues. I agree with Blair. I did like it, and I, but I did have a lot more fun with it than I thought it would, but also it it really feels like it gets repetitive after a while, but then what is any any other Batman game really? And but I also feel like it's also unfair to compare it to, you know, the other Batman games when it is also trying to be at least a little bit different. But at the end of the day, I as much as I do want to shelf it, I'm probably gonna stack it because I I really don't feel like after I I'll probably still play with my husband because we play a lot of games together. And but once we beat it, I'll probably never end up going back to it ever again. That's fine. I mean, once you beat a game, you shouldn't go back in most cases. Oh, you there's, play there's, all the other game, new games. Oh, there. oh, there's some games like I, I've been going back to Spider-Man 100 percent because of how fucking great it is. <laughs> I can't do that. But then again, I, I do this. So that's what well, it's, it's just fun to do. And it's the same concept as here where it's like I a lot of that stuff gets easier once you have all your character fully upgraded. So, yeah. I just I can't keep playing a game after I beat it, but I do go back every so often. And I mean, hell, I'm playing. I, I can't show. believe I I know we're at the end, but uh, in New Game Plus, what's the bummer is that you have to do certain things over again. Like you have to do the Knighthood missions again in New Game Plus, and you have to do that's the dumb. Fast Travel missions again in New Game Plus. Because that's, that's like dumb. like Spider Man. Like it's so much fun. I kind of call it like. The like meat and potatoes run because when you do New Game Plus and Marvel Spider Man, you're like, I don't have to do any of the side stuff. I can just beeline through the story, and it almost makes the game better because you have all the other stuff out of the way. But in here, it's like, okay, I'm going to play it again, and I'm going to have to do, I'm going to have all that stuff done, and then you still have to do it. It's like, oh come on, I'm just trying so hard to love you, but you make it so hard. <laughs> yeah, I can get that. All right, and I'll I'll go last. I'm going to put this. On the shelf, I had an amazing time playing this game. I couldn't put it down. I would take my Steam Deck to bed with me like every night and play until the battery died, which was about two hours. <laughs> so, there's some, there's somewhere around there I never really kept track, but it wasn't that long, it felt like. And just had a lot of fun. Like, I just really enjoyed this game. I did all the side stuff that I could do for the most part and just kept playing. Until I just like, okay, I need to finish this. But it was just a really good time. And I, I don't know if it's just I hadn't played a lot of open worlds in a while, and this one just really grab me i think that might have been part of it because i've played open world since then and i'm less interested but great game going on the shelf so happy i finally played it and just had an amazing experience 
Right, and I do have a little bit of something else to read. Travis, uh, who was going to be on this episode, who unfortunately couldn't make it because he got sick, but he had a big thing for me to say. So this is from Travis Wayne. Uh, let's see here. He just wants to say Gotham Knights is a game that was made for me and a particular group of folks who kind of find more appealing to the Bat family rather than Batman. I'm a huge Batman fan, but Robin, Batgirl, and Nightwing mean more to me. And to finally get a game where they are fully realized, well, it's been a long time coming. There's so many more reasons. This is my favorite game in the last 25 years. But yeah, maybe some things I have are up. The photo mode is incredible. The best I've used this generation. Though Spider-Man 2 is close, which I didn't even use the photo mode in this game because I don't do that. The multiplayer aspect is underappreciated. It's a tetherless experience where a dynamic duel can roam around the city, drop in, drop out, and do as they please with their own individual XP. I don't think that this gets enough praise personally as it was flawlessly integrated and crossplay. The rhythm based combo combat, the game is not really explicit about this, but the game com the way combos work is rhythmic and timing based on button pushes. And I think it's the best grounded superhero combat in any game because of every strike means something. Your gear actually matters. And it's a true Batman simulation. That prep time is super important. I love that. With the HUD turned off and the music off and the subwoofer crank, each hit felt like a powerhouse move and dropping into an alleyway chained together a flawless combo was more rewarding to me than anything in arkham it's the free experience i wanted to in a batman game there's so much more i could say there's also a lot wrong in the game i acknowledge but i feel like a lot of things i love have glaring warts and i'm sure you'll get into all of this yeah we mostly did <laughs> Most did. I'll, I'll never judge a person for saying like a, a pretty decent game is their favorite game of all time and i say that be, because my favorite game of all time is probably deadly premonitions <laughs> okay that's is there a reason? Like, was it time in that, your life or something? No, that that game just has a lot of heart. That game has like it so does. much. Yeah, and that that's what every like game story needs is just a really a bunch of goofy heart, and it's just a bunch of weird like characteristics and stuff like that. And I even say that because the gameplay for that game is fucking awful. <laughs> oh, I did it on the show actually. Yeah. So a while ago. Well, it's an episode too. <laughs> I mean, I own a website based on comic book video games, so you know where I fall on that side of the argument. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I bought two copies of Justice League Cosmic Chaos earlier this year. Isn't that the mobile game that should have been a mobile game, right? No, that's the... Oh, that's Super Pets. X-Men Legends, uh, like, that's okay. way better than it has any right to be. It was the Super Pets one that was essentially felt like a mobile game, right? Yes. Okay. I remember that. <laughs> I remember I went to games out with my son, and I was I wanted to pick out a game, and I'm like, yeah, you don't, he didn't pick that up, but I'm like, yeah, we ain't, we ain't going near that. Like, here, let's. <laughs> I was trying to get a, get him to play by Immortals. He's like, I don't want Immortals. I'm like, you don't know, you don't want Immortals. Phoenix Rising, which I've been bought from anyway later on, but <laughs> kids don't know. I forgot what he picked out too. That's neither here nor there. All right, and I should do what we're talking about next week to continue my open world thing. For some reason, we are talking about Infamous Second Son next week, so you can look forward to that. A game that I had never played until this week. So <laughs> that I have bought two copies of by accident, I found out too. For PS4. Two copies, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I hope Ken listens to this episode. I really do. Uh, uh, so <laughs> all right. <laughs> and Blair, where can people find you at? Uh you can find me at comicbookvideogames.com, uh, where you can read my review of Marvel Spider Man. Two and the most recent Hellboy game, uh, and the date of this recording. I have the Turok 3 remaster and Arkham Trilogy on Switch to look forward to, so look forward to that in the future when I have time to play both of those to a point where I can review them. <laughs> you just gotta quit your job, Blair. <laughs> yeah, talking about superhero games really pays the bills. I have like <laughs> dozens of readers a day. <laughs> dozens! <laughs> I completely understand. I make a profit of five dollars a month from this podcast, or so, like something like that. So that's five dollars more than when I make a month on comicbookvideogames.com. <laughs> <laughs> Look, just, just stream your. All you have to do is stream the games you're reviewing in a bikini, and I'm sure you'll get tons of money. If I was a hot girl, yes, <laughs> but I'm not. But I have thought about streaming. But I think that does help. I really do think that does help. Stay tuned. I'm thinking about it. <laughs> <sighs> I, I i get enough tiktoks because i i must have clicked tiktoks of, of of hot women dancing and things and all of a sudden i get tons of videos i'm like hmm, okay you got me tiktok like i understand yeah, i remember it's just with my wife like why is it always women on tiktok she's like what are you talking about i'm like oh hmm, that's just my algorithm huh <laughs> she knows <laughs> but i just noticed that i'm like oh and i got a bunch of hoof cutting algorithms too on my because i kept watching the hoof trimming things 
for oh, some reason on TikTok. They're, they're so satisfying, though. I know. I don't know why. <laughs> okay, I'm the old here. What the hell are you talking about? Well, they're, well, for cows, they trim the hoofs. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it do. is a and cow thing? I thought it was a song, like... A, no, I, no, it's an actual cow thing. I thought it was that, but I was like, some... Is this like a new term that I don't know that the kids no, are no, using? No, no, it's not anything weird. <laughs> it's just, there's a guy called Nate the Hoof Doctor who I started watching a video where he'll he'll trim a cow's hoof and he'll talk about like, oh, they've got an infection here and this is what I'm going to do to you know to clean it up and make the cow feel better and just little things like that. And it, I started watching them and I started getting more and more trimming and I started getting horseshoe and I I don't know what it is, but they work. They're just like you just like that quick little like five you know minute fix of just watching a video then you yeah i okay. don't know i was wasn't sure if this was just yeah like, no yo. nothing weird it's actual hook for me i mean i do get some weird shit on tiktok mostly this is dancing. your boy nate something 2020 talking about like doing the new hook trimming <laughs> yeah no, no, it's actual trimming, but no i hey I, I make tiktoks now actually really dumb tiktoks that have nothing to do with game my mom found even though they're under that banner but i do make tiktoks i make a lot of animal tiktoks that i make literally from my desk that i'm sitting at when i look outside Hey man, that's a goal. People love animals. You know, people do, but not enough. Not enough hits. There's also a really dumb TikTok me wearing a Harley Quinn mask that I got. In a, but yeah, go, go look at my TikTok. Games my mom found TikTok. And if you enjoyed this episode, there's more 550 of this podcast. You can find everything that we do. We do movies, comics, tons of Batman content. So just type in Batman. You will find tons of stuff to go listen to if you want more Batman. Or just go through our catalog, type in whatever you want. Star Wars, Sandman, who knows? You'll find something. We flash you'll find an episode we do tons of different stuff and if you want to support the show we do a patreon for those dogs you can vote in our patreon poll we have one every month so you can help out and you get to affect something that's going to be on the show so you can do that and, and also support the show a lot and you maybe you can make it six dollars and make profit ah, so it's <laughs> something like that but definitely go support the show also want to give a shout out to my awesome intro and outro courtesy of Helena at hell has fury she became tiktok famous so definitely go check her out you'll see a link to her link tree in the show notes you can follow her she does twitch streaming now other things so definitely go check her out awesome person i uh, want to give a shout out to my uh, my buddy bill tucker to his own podcast the gamer looks at 40 definitely go check him out he's on hiatus at the moment i think till next year but tons of good episodes to listen to he interviews people but much more family friendly show than what this show is. But go definitely check him out. And also check out Nomads of Fantasy and their podcast. Uh, they support me too. So you should go check them out. They're a good show. And if you want to talk with us, we have a Discord. Please join our Discord. I've been meaning to mention that in the, in the top of the episodes for more people who will join because they don't stick around for all the blam- blabbing at the, at the end of the episode. But join our Discord, please. Chat with us. <laughs> or just lurk and make the number go up and make me happy. That's uh, that's fine, too. You don't have to say a damn word. Just join and make me happy. And please follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Blue Sky, Threads that nobody uses, and TikTok, and YouTube. Audio only, but we are on YouTube also. So you can go he- hear, all, hear everything that we do there. I think that's everything I need to say, so we will see you guys all next time. Bye, everybody. 